सदाशिव समारंभाम शंकराचार्य मध्यमाम अस्वदाचार्य परियंताम मंदे गुरु परंपराम फ्रेंड्स ऑल द ऑपरेशंस जनरली डील विथ ज्ञान योग द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड द पाथ ऑफ नॉलेज सो इट इज सेड बाय शंकर इन वन ऑफ हिज पैसेजेस दैट ज्ञान एव तु कैवल्यम liberation or absolute liberation can be obtained only through jnana or knowledge that is supreme knowledge na karma samuchita not by the aggregation of karmas or actions so as visualized by shankaracharya most of the parishads deal with the path of knowledge or jnana yoga so in this session today we will take up the jnana yoga as elaborated in the mundaka upanishad as the very word denotes mundaka means that which is having a shaven head so mundaka upanishad is generally meant for sanyasins or mendicants it is said because in sanskrit munda means tonsured head or shaven head so that upanishad which narrates those knowledge which can be practiced by sanyasis or mendicants is elaborated in this mundaka upanishad however it also speaks of the yamas and the niyamas and it further says that the path of devotion or bhakti is very very important to attain the supreme reality this mundaka upanishad is having 64 mantras you know the basically they were classified into mantras and it has three chapters This belongs to Atharva Veda or Atharva Veda. So all the Veda Upanishads belong to one or the other Veda. Among the four Vedas, the Atharva Veda is the last, and this Upanishad belongs to Atharva Veda. It is in three chapters, consisting of sixty-four mantras, classified into two branches. as elaborated in the beginning of the mundaka upanishad the creator of the supreme reality or the brahman taught this secret mantra or the mundaka upanishad to his eldest son it is said atharva so creator taught this to atharva the eldest son and the elder son atharva taught it to anki another sage anki taught this upanishad to satyavaha bharatvaja and satyavaha bharatvaja taught this to angirasa then angirasa taught this to shaunaka like this we find there is a succession of the sages a hereditary succession of the sages through which this knowledge of mundaka upanishad was imparted in this upanishad then what do we find already elaborated by our honorable chancellor that it consists of two types of knowledge dve vidye vedavye इति यो वदी परेर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ नॉलेज वन इज कॉल्ड द सुप्रीम नॉलेज द अदर इज कॉल्ड द फंडामेंटल नॉलेज द अपरा विद्या ऑफ द फंडामेंटल नॉलेज विच इज ऑल्सो ट्रांसलेटेड बाई वेस्टर्न स्कॉलर्स एज लोयर साइंस डील्स विथ वॉट इट डील्स विथ 
तत्र अपरा ऋग्वेदो यजुर्वेद सामवेदो धर्मवेद शिक्षा कल्पो व्याकरण निरुक्त छंदो ज्योतिष अथ परा यथा तदक्षर अधिगम्य सो अकॉर्डिंग टू उंडक उपनिषद अपरा विद्या और लोयर साइंस और फंडामेंटल नॉलेज एलॉबरेट्स अपॉन द फोर वेद ऋग्वेद यजुर्वेद सामवेद अथर्व वेद और इट इज कॉल्ड एज अथर्वण वेद कंबाइनिंग ऑल दीज फोर वेद देयर आर 20000 मंत्रस एंड इट डील्स विद the microcosm the macrocosm the forces of nature the how to appreciate these things all are elaborated in this which is the intuitive knowledge of our sages when written later by other sages down the lane became the vedas to understand these vedas we need some subsidiary texts the subsidiary texts are six in number they are called vedanga anga the limbs of vedana of the vedas vedana anga vedanga so which are these shiksha shiksha means science of phonetics in our schools and colleges they taught us especially in the schools how to pronounce a letter a or a is it s sh etc what is the mechanism involved which part of the mouth is involved in pronouncing s and sh h etc for example when you say s sh s h keep your palms near the mouth the air comes out is it so they are called as spirits like that the 48 letters of sanskrit have different origin for in our mouth through which it is pronounced this was called shiksha or science of phonetics in modern language or modern philology study of languages next kalpa rituals ceremony and rituals actually in order to perform from yagna or yaga there are some rules and regulations these have to be followed some mantras have to be recited by x y z pota pota ne stot gata it is said well how what time the ritual should be given what time it should end how many people should be involved all these are elaborated in the kalpa or the ritual then grammar science of grammar the grammar of vedas called pratishakshas are there even now hence vedic knowledge is pakka even now in the same way in classical sanskrit panini brought out the wonderful knowledge so it is present even now because of that sanskrit is intact even after 2400 years the classical sanskrit so vyakarana or grammar is very very important vedic grammar classical sanskrit grammar it began with ramayana classical sanskrit grammar began with ramayana and the mahabharata because they were written in the form of shlokas or verses then nirukta etymology you want to know the meaning of your meaning of your name your parents were so fond and they selected the name and gave that name to you when you become old you wanted to know the meaning of your name what is the etymology of the name that is called nirukta for example in sanskrit there is a word called turaga so that means has why 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 not cow or why not bull why turaga means only has the etymology is turena gachadi iti turagaha 
Ganchati that moves Turena very fast, quickly, which moves very swiftly. Therefore, it is called Turaga. Like that, all the Vedic words, all the Sanskrit words have etymology. Yaska Charya selected the important 1200 plus words from the Vedas and they elaborate etymology and meaning of those words. This is called Nirukta. Then Chandas. The Vedas have to be recited in a systematic fashion with Udhata, High Pitch, Anudhata, Lower Pitch, Swarita, Medium. So Udhata, Anudhata, Swarita, they should be recited. Udhvabhshado Radhaset Vishwan Karanna Indra Sudhirtha Vayanja It goes like that. So, it has to be recited in a systematic fashion so that was elaborated in Chandas or Prozodi. Prozodi. Then, as you look up at the sky, you find so many stars, so many planets, so many meteors and is there a connection between me and those sky, me and those planets, meteors, sun, the moon, the stars and will they have any effect on us or on the world? All these were elaborated in Jyotisha. So these were the six limbs of the Vedas. Vedanga, by studying these six limbs of the Vedas, you can easily understand the Vedas. Then these were called foundational knowledge. Then which is the Paradidya, supreme knowledge. Athapara yaya tanaksharam adhikam yade. That is called the akshara which is un, which does not perish or destroy, which remains forever, which is unchangeable, is called akshara. Kshyarati iti kshyaraha. That which diminishes, that which gets destroyed, gets weakened, is called kshara. Our body is kshara because as we grow old and older, we become weak and weaker and they get. So it is not akshara but kshara. But within this kshara is present akshara, the immutable or the unchangeable thing which is undiminishable, diminishable, that is the soul of the supreme reality which is responsible for all my activities and this has to be observed and this has to be understood to understand this to understand this higher knowledge of paravidya we should be very humble Inaya. we should be very humble we should be calm and quiet in our mind, samatva. We should establish samatva in our mind. Samatvam, yoga, ujjate. Balance in mind is yoga. Poise in action is yoga. So, Kundaka Upanishad says that you should be very humble when you meet the teacher. Humble in studying such secret, higher supreme knowledge and have balance of mind. With imbalanced mind, with results in the mind, we can never achieve it. So the eightfold path of yoga, which was later elaborated by Patanjali, is given importance in Muttaka Upanishad. And it says it is important for sadhana or me. Then the Muttaka Upanishad says, with all these instruments, even the grace of the Supreme Reality is important. Bhakti or devotion is important. The grace of the Lord Krupa or Anugraha is important. With that, we can achieve it. Further, it says, there are some cardinal values or ethics in life called truth, satya, absolute truth. Brahman, tapas or penance, Brahmacharya or celibacy, conquest over the five sense organs are absolutely necessary for attaining this Brahman, 
So a spiritual aspirant should know these things. Then further it says, first we learn about, first we learn about the Brahman, Shravana. Then we start thinking about that Brahman, Manana. Start meditating upon that Brahman, Nididhyasana. So, Shravana Manana Nididhyasana should be done. Atma, Vare, Shotavyo, Vandavyo, Nididhyasana Nyaha should be elaborated and done. Finally, Undaka Upanishad says, one who realizes Brahman becomes Brahman itself. Brahma with Brahmaiva Bhavati. With Enoya, Brahma, Brahman becomes ultimate supreme reality itself. So, how did this world came into existence? We see so many things in the world. The Upanishad solves this problem and it says, everything springs. Here and there I quote the original verses from the Mundaka Upanishad for your benefit. Nuttaka Upanishad says, everything was created by the Creator. To go, Yathurna Nabi Sujane Grunhadecha, Yatha Pudivya Moshadaya Sambhavanti, Yatha Sata Purusha Kesha Rumani, Tatha Akshara Sambhavadi Havishwamha. The whole thing in the world, entire thing in the cosmos was created by this creator or the supreme reality of the Brahman. It is like the spider, example given in Buddha Kaupanishad, see how our sages and seers examine the minutest activities of the universe. Buddha Kaupanishad says, just as the spider weaves the web, the spider web, from its own saliva and creates the web and gets caught in it. And whenever we want, it goes out of that. So just as a spider weaves the spider web, just as a seed is planted in the soil and this soil, this seed slowly emerges and comes out with seedling and saplings and then comes as a plant. Just as the hairs get originated in our body, in the same way the Creator creates all these animate and inanimate things of the universe. Having created, He gave the knowledge to us. He created all the beings of the world. Actually, He created the food. From the food came the life. From the life originated the mind. From the mind came the Pancha Bhutas or the five elements. And the five elements were, were made up into the world. And the world gave us activity. So we got engaged in the activity and understood the everlasting person. Hence, to know this, we should be truthful. Satya nalabhya tamasa kesha atma samya jnane na brahma charye na nitya anta sharire jyotir vayo vishubro yam pashyanti yadaya kshira doshaha Buddha Kaupanishad is telling, in order to understand this macrocosm and the microcosm, the connection between the microcosm and the macrocosm, connection between us, our body, with that of the external world, with that of the, uh, all the objects of the world and with the supreme reality of the universe, we should be seekers of truth. Speakers of truth. Then, we should do some penance or jhana or meditation because some ideas flash in the mind. If you intensify your dharana for some more, for some minutes a day, for three months, six months, finally there will be intuitive flashes in your mind. That is called tapas, result of tapas. 
Samyak jnana, right knowledge, paramitya, should be understood. With that, one should have celibacy. When these things happen, what is present within us, inside us, antar jnana, antashyarire jyotir mayaha, jyoti, that which is in the form of light by which everything gets lighted. So that one is pure in nature, which is seen and visualized by the people. For that, your mind should become prashanta chittaya shavandhidaya. It says, see, tasmai samitvan upasandaya samyat. Prashanta Chittaya Shaman Vidaya. So for that purpose, be calm and quiet in your mind. When it happens, you will get everything. Your mind get stationed in the Supreme Brahman. Brahmai Vedam Vishwa Vidam The whole universe, the entire universe is stationed in the ultimate reality of the supreme reality and that is supreme nature which is present within us that has to be realized therefore we should practice speaking the truth satya meva jayate nanrutam satye ramantha vidato deva yana yena kramanti rishayo shaktakama this is how Mundaka Upanishad declares that truth alone triumphs and not falsehood. This is from the Mundaka Upanishad 316 and our uh, four uh, fathers of the constitution while writing the Indian constitution gave this as the motto of the Indian constitution. Truth alone triumphs and not falsehood. Hence, it is important that we should know this truth, and this truth cannot be experienced by our five sensorial organs eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and the skin. It cannot be experienced by our five motor organs. It can be experienced, cannot be sometimes experienced even by penance of the actions we do. Then by what? The people with Shuddha Sattvaha, pure consciousness, pure mind, who have been bestowed on jnana or the knowledge by the Supreme Reality can see this which is without impurity, and those who meditate upon it. Tam chakshusha brihyate nāpi vāca nāmye ir deva is tamasā karmanā ca jñāna prasādena viśuddha sattva tatastutam pashyate nishkala dhyāna māna dhyāya māna So, we have to meditate. Sometime we have to meditate few minutes. Then you say, I have so many desires in the mind. And I am having so many desires. I want to fulfill those desires. Is it wrong for me to fulfill those desires? No. This Buddha cognition says, fulfill your proper desires and same desires. If it cannot be fulfilled, you are born again as a human being. Having completed your desire, you are elevated in your birth and you become next a uh, supreme god or deva. From Deva to Yaksha, Raksha, Sandarva, Kindara, you get elevated in each one and finally you become uh, united with the Supreme Reality. So, Mundaka says, by learning this Paravidya or Supreme Knowledge, one at a time, one goes away from deep sorrow or melancholy. One is free from death. One will be free from the fear of death and fear from free, free from the sin. Dharati Shokam, Dharati Papmanam, 
गुहा ग्रंथि यो विमुक्तो अमृतो भवति सी यू विल यू विल ट्रांसेंड ओवर आवर डे इन एंड डे आउट एंड रेगुलर वरीज एंड सारोस एंड प्रॉब्लम्स बिकॉज वी आर कॉट इन द सर्क्यूट ऑफ संसारा वी आर बाउंड बाय द पैसेज ऑफ लाइफ एंड द डाइकोटमीज ऑफ लाइफ लव पैशन लव हेट्रेड होप डिस्पे happiness and happiness joy sorrow we always suffer day in and day out from this we want to get out of this dichotomy of life called jeevan and dwandva and upanishad teaches you tarati and for that we get the shoka as moha and we get out of that shoka and moha sorrow and delusion and we get out of the fear of death mrityu and we come out and transcend the sin and finally the knots of the heart gets liberated when the knots of the heart gets liberated we get absolutely free and liberated and we become immortal in nature so vimukto mrto bhavati this is what it says helps this immutable thing or the akshara has to be experienced by us this akshara which is a part of the gnana yoga is elaborated in this mundha kaupanishad and by hearing this contemplating on that and meditating slowly we can realize it and get liberated and that is what let us contemplate our uh, today